you know, my father died when I was 19. And so I never knew him as a adult adult conversation. There's just a whole bunch of things I'd like to ask him. Over at Montreal's West Island, in the middle of Point Claire's 1950s suburban boom, a mall was being built to serve its growing community. And in that mall was a store called Ted's Records and Hobbies. I remember Ted's from the beginning. This, this long skinny store with neat stuff. They had models, they had any glue you wanted, your marbles, all your little kids' toys. The, little spud guns. Now the owner of this store, the guy who started it, Edward Bryans, also known as Ted, born in 1914 and also a World War II vet, moved his family to Valwa in 1953. This father of two sons, Michael and Bill, had a vision to open a store of his own one day, and eventually saw this opportunity some five years later with a vacancy in the Point Claire shopping center. So the store, the shopping center opened in 58. I was five. Now Ted's Hobby Shop, which still exists today, caters to everybody from the obscure toy lover to the hobbyist, the crafter, the warhammerer, and so much more. But in 1958, that was on one side of the store. On the other side of the store were records, sweet, sexy, glorious, vinyl, don't break up with your girlfriend cause she'll steal all your records. What I loved was the records. I still call it Ted's Records and Hobbies to this day. Now, of course they sold all those big names in those early years, but no record sales compared to what happened in the early mid 60s. Before I got there, record sales were just kind of so-so. There was a lot of novelty records being sold, and then comedy records were also big until the British invasion, and then of course that just phenomenal. Those of you my age, where were you on Sunday night when Ed Sullivan put the Beatles on TV? They would ask to have Beatle records put on, and they go, oh, they'd sigh and they'd weep. George! George! <laughs> the record business just completely took off in a way that it hadn't before. Now, what's important to remember is that at that time, Ted's Records and Hobbies was the only place in town selling these records, helping to build a community of all these baby boomer music lovers. I had to have that Beatles record. So mom took me to Ted's and I bought that 45. The 33s were expensive. They were almost $5. <laughs> That's a lot of babysitting when you make 50 cents an hour babysitting. We sold everything we could get our hands on Beatles. You know, we sold wigs, we had buttons, posters. The most popular thing was Beatle wallpaper. You know, it, it was the center of our musical life for a while. <laughs> With this new success of Ted's records and hobbies, it's obvious Ted couldn't do it alone. It was a mom and pop shop after all. So, Ted being the pop, Mom Margaret was there, helping out in the store daily. Big Brother Bill, I'm sure, worked there on the weekends when he wasn't in school. The son was in a band too, so that made him, and he had Beatle haircuts, so he was, you know, we could identify with him. And little brother Michael, who was five years younger, spent his days sweeping the floors, and then when he got old enough, worked security for said high school students, preventing these kids from gaining their unearned trophy, a stolen record. Going down the hill and stealing a record from Ted's was, was part of the recreation, and part of my job was to sit at the end of the aisle, sort of stare. <laughs> And Dalton Pratt, who started in the early 60s, had also become an extended member of Ted's family. Dalton was you know, one of the first and prized employees, and he was the real rock uh, for the family. We picked up our own records, actually twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we would get them as soon as they were released. And Dalton was certainly there to help the store through what was one of its toughest times. I can remember a number of times that I'd be there and my father would say, oh, let's go to the game, Michael. We're not even earning enough to keep the lights on. The advantages of living in a growing community that Ted experienced early on also served as a disadvantage. You see, as early as 1964, plans had been submitted to the city for the opening of an even bigger, more modern, and indoor mall. They had bigger stores which attracted a bigger clientele and in turn had competitive pricing, a little too competitive. Everybody was selling records, Pascals, you know, Sears, Eaton's, everybody had a record department. So by the early 70s, Fairview's presence had affected Ted's record sales enough to have them have to close their record division indefinitely. Eventually we uh, got out of the record business in around 71. As the records became 
less important. We needed the space to expand more into hobbies and uh, toys. It was also around that time in 1971 when Ted became ill and tragically passing away in January of 1972. Barely 14 years of the store's existence. I mean, I was never in the store again after my father passed. I don't think my mother was either. My mother had ownership of the store. However, with Ted's passing, she felt that it was time to move on. The store, by this time in its second location in the mall, had passed on to its second owner, Dalton Pratt, who turned Ted's records and hobbies into the iconic Ted's Hobby Shop, which it still is today. Ted's was always a constant. Ted's has been there and is still there today. When you figure how many businesses fail, for it to be over 60 years, it's got to be one of the oldest hobby shops in the country now. It's clearly engendered loyalty through generations. Dalton took it over and then Pete took it over and people kept sending their kids and then their kids' kids. Though the many upcoming West Island teens continued to go to Fairview for their musical experience for decades to come, it cannot be expressed enough how important the memories are for many of those early teeny baby boomies of buying their first Beach Boy records, Stones records, Jerry and the Pacemakers, and of course, where they were begging their parents to go the morning after the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. And those memories belong to Ted's Records and Hobbies.